Uh, my name is Joanna. I'm a dietitian at Form Health. And some of you I had a pleasure to meet. Some of you just meeting for the fir very first time. So uh, we try to do the cooking class, sort of focus on simple, uh, simple meals, seasonal meals. Um, today we're going to cook something related to spring. I don't know about you, but I feel so run down <laughs> recently. And I don't know if it's a, just a change of seasons, it's the time change, whatever it is, I feel like I need more energy. Um, so part of getting, uh, getting the, the energy is getting, I, I always think, more nutrients besides caffeine, which is not a necessary nutrient, but uh, getting all other nutrients. So today we'll focus on um, sort of a few simple dishes that can provide us with with a lot of nutrients packed in, in one. Uh, we're going to make three dishes. We're going to make a smoothie and we'll talk more about making how to make a delicious and nutrients packed smoothie. We're going to make a flatbread from lavash bread, uh, which sort of resemble a pizza and it's a great for appetizers. It's a great for, um, for a, for lunch even or dinner, um, because again, it will be packed with a lot of vegetables and, and protein. And for dessert, we'll make a protein truffles, or it doesn't sound like amazing, amazing things, but again, you will see it's a very simple, a few ingredients, recipes that you can make it and use it sort of more as a, for a snack or dessert after, after dinner. All right, so um, I think we should we should start um, again. Uh, so let's talk about smoothies. How many of you actually make smoothies at home? I don't know. You can put in a note. You can you can put in a chat uh, chat box, or you can just say it if your uh, if your microphone is uh, on. So let me know how many of you love making smoothies. Every day, someone is saying, I do, I do, perfect. Anybody else? Okay. I would, I would like to. Okay, how do you, for those who do make smoothies, what are you paying attention? What do you put in? Let me know, or oh, let us know. You can speak up, it's a pretty small group, so we all can chat, chat and, and sort of keep <sighs> it more entertaining. What do you typically put in your smoothies? I put in spinach when I do. Mm -hmm. Make them in yogurt and and bananas sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, People great. are seeing so, the chat: berries, kale, yogurt, bananas, strawberry, flaxseed. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ooh. Protein powder, green powder, almond milk. We've got a lot of ingredients being used here. Oh my gosh! I am so excited. So I, uh, to to be honest, I I think for past month or so, I think I had smoothie one smoothie uh, a day. Maybe I skipped few few days here and there, but this is one of my favorite breakfasts because again, it's so quick. Uh, so quick, you can just put several different ingredients, blend it and go. Uh, so what would be the good anatomy of your smoothie? Did every, uh, all of you got the handouts? No. No? no? So the handouts were, if you signed up via, uh, via chat, I sent everybody handouts and recipes. If you, uh, you send I sent them uh, on Monday. It should no, be. I don't think email. I didn't, email. I, didn't, oh, I, didn't I didn't sign up until yesterday, so I didn't get them. I see. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. So if you, for those who signed up, look at it, your email because I send the email with the link and the uh, recipes. And for those who just recently signed up or just joined uh, via Facebook, no problem. I will upload the recipe later on to the file on Facebook. There's a, a tab uh, called files and I will upload all the recipes. But basically anatomy of a good smoothie, you need to find a liquid, right? 
So and it could be a many different different things. Um, I I use often mm. almond milk right here. So almond milk is sort of blend, doesn't have a lot of flavor, doesn't have a lot of calories. One, uh, one cup of almond milk, this one is unsweetened, has a 30 calories. So it's a very sort of neutral, but it still gives a little creaminess. You can definitely use a regular milk, um, low fat, you can use soy milk, you can use, um, you can use oat milk. There's so many different varieties of different milks uh, or different liquids. Uh, if you have allergies, you might probably avoid, you know, the ingredient that the, the milk is made from. So almond milk does not have a lot of protein in comparison to regular milk. Regular milk, a cup of milk will be low fat, like around 110, 120 calories or even less, uh, but it will have seven grams of protein. This one, 30 grams, no, not much protein. So, okay, that's fine. It's, you can add proteins from other, other sources. So first you need your liquid. Second, ideally you want to put some produce. And remember for, for those who met with your dietitian, there are two P's that you want to follow. One is the protein and one is the produce. So those two piece, pieces, Peace are so important because that's what gives us satiety. That's what fills us up. So remember, if you eat, if you look at your plate, you always want to combine your protein and some type of produce. And the produce would be vegetables or fruits, right? So there's a whole gamut of things that you can throw into your smoothie. Uh, so fruits are very easy because they're palatable, they're sweet, they gives you beautiful color like raspberry or blueberries you can add them in uh you can use mango pineapple you can use um bananas bananas gives nice creaminess to it um so within the fruit family just don't use too much of fruits because i see sometimes people will make a smoothie and they will basically uh, add like cup and a half of frozen fruits, like pineapple, mango, and throw banana and little milk. And at that point, the smoothie is just a fruit base. There's not much oomph to it. There's not much, there's no protein to it. There's not a lot of fiber. So you may get hungry very quickly after eating only fruit smoothies. So try to stay away from just the plain fruit smoothies. Add more to it. But but fruits are wonderful. Berries, as you know, they have a lot of benefit. Eating berries, a lot of benefits to us. The phytochemicals, the, the more robust in color, the better for us. So blueberries, raspberries, go for it. Or you know, other other stuff as well. I add bananas uh, as well, especially sometimes when you have the uh, uh, ripened bananas, you don't know what to do with it, and you should not be making a lot of banana bread. So you can always throw it in a freezer, cut it in pieces, cut it sort of in a quarter, put in a Ziploc so you can use for your smoothies, um, uh, frozen bananas, they're, they're wonderful. So again, so second ingredient is a, uh, a, a some kind of produce. Also, what you can sneak in is the produce, like some, some people say kale, uh, spinach. Spinach is very mild and sort of almost like blends in with other flavors. It takes away the flavor of from mango or from other stuff. So if you have opportunity to add a handful of that, go for it. This is a great, great way, way to enhance your vegetables intake in a day. So kale, um, kale or, uh, or spinach. Also, some people add frozen uh, cauliflower. Again, it's very sort of mild. It does not have pronounced big flavors, but it gives a nice sort of creaminess. Um, I had a patient today and she says, I make my smoothies with cauliflower, uh, cauliflower rice, which was, you know, so, so nice. So again, think about adding produce. Also what is interesting, some people add avocado to, to your smoothie. So quarter avocado. So it does have, it's a sort of, um, vegetable fruit however you want to put in what category but also it's good 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 fat to it so you can add a quarter avocado 
and it really makes it creamy. Like seriously, talking about ice cream creamy, avocado will do it for you. So, okay, we have our liquid, we have our produce, and the produce would be spinach. Um, I'm going to add half a banana. I didn't have frozen one, I have fresh one. And for my smoothie, I have um, a mango. Again, the idea of adding too much fruits may bump it up too much carbohydrates in your smoothie. So keep it half a, half a cup. This is, so you have two servings of smoothie. If you have uh, something, so you already are three servings of produce in a, in a day, just by adding into the, into the, your, your, those ingredients into your smoothie. So we have that. You can also sneak in basil, parsley, cilantro, if you like it, or mint, if you like it. I, uh, this, this smoothie that I'm gonna make for you today, I call that mojito because, well, I, I don't have mint today, but you can add mint and little lime and have your little morning mojito and brag about it in your, um, you know, to your coworkers, I'm having mojito today for breakfast. So mint and other herbs are highly, highly recommended. Again, in, enhance the, the sort of palatable, palatability and just flavor, right? And also got a lot of nutrients. Great combination is basil and blueberries, B and B, okay? So, so think about combining those and experiment with those. All right, so we have pack with nutrients, your vegetables, your fruits, you're ready to go. And now the key ingredients, it's the another P is your protein. And the protein, it could be a whole gamut of different types. So if you vegan, you could definitely use a tofu for your, uh, as your base of your protein. And I highly recommend adding that protein because it will increase fullness for much longer. So, uh, so tofu, go for it. And usually if you buy the silken tofu, it's smooth. It's almost like a, you know, a jello type. Um, it blends really, really well. You just, it will pick up the flavor of your fruits. Another, another thing, if you okay with uh, yogurts, Greek yogurt is fantastic. My daughter often makes for herself for breakfast, add Greek yogurt and fruits. And uh, she's not crazy about the basil situation, but you know, she's still 14. She's, she's growing into it. Or spinach, she experimented for a few times, but I know you are adult, you can do it. Uh, so Atlanta, go, someone is yeah. asking, can you add veggie powder? I have a container of powdered greens. Okay. You know what? I have a container powdered greens too, and they have very strong flavor. You could add it. But if you, um, if you don't mind sort of, some of them depends which one you have. If you add a lot of it, it's going to be very strong. So normally, because I bought it a while ago, don't ask me why, uh, a whole container of sort of vegetables, fruit powder, and it's been in my cupboard for a long time, I decided time to use it. So <laughs> in the morning, I will have a half a teaspoon mixed with water and a little lemon and drink that. Uh, if I remember, not always, but you certainly can add it to it. And it's going to be very, just, just sort of play with the flavor. If it's not too much, not sort of, uh, you know, doesn't make it, it should be ple pleasant, should be tasty, your smoothie, not something that you drink with your closed nose and sort of down it, down it quickly. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good question with that. Going back to protein. So we have tofu. We have Greek yogurt, fantastic. Plain Greek yogurt, pile in. Also, you can um, add cottage cheese. Uh, it's another very interesting uh, protein and you, you can blend it and blend like a, a wonderful sort of ricotta or even, even more like smooth and it, it works well. Um, so you can use that if you, if you are sort of in a pinch, but also, there's a protein powders and a lot of people prefer that or because it's much easier. I personally use uh, pro protein powders a lot. Um, so there are many different ones. Um, all right, so I have here collagen powder. 
it's a easy sort of dissolve doesn't have a lot of flavor uh you can definitely add that or you can combine it a little bit of this and i have a uh, i have a whey protein uh here uh so it is i have vanilla i have chocolate i have peanut butter name it i have it but this is one scoop has a 20 grams of of protein in them so remember we are aiming for 20 to 30 grams of protein per each meal 30 you're doing good 20 oh, you can bump it up a little bit but 20 <laughs> is pretty good so proteins are your key your, your good good friend so adding that to 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 um to your smoothie is easy also if you are vegetarian or if you prefer plant-based there's uh, so many different powders protein uh, based powder like vega uh, vega or uh, vega or other stuff so use whatever you have uh for for sort of adding on again yogurts if you prefer sort of natural foods um you can do the tofu if you completely want so completely something vegan you can add the uh, different powders or cottage cheese as well um so again a lot of and the powders also will come the uh, vegan or vegetarian you can uh, have a pea protein someone is asking a question kim can you read it because i'm blind i cannot yeah. see it from here it says can you share the name of the powders again it's hard to see oh okay definitely so you know what i will post a list of powders so this calls design protein and i buy that at trader joe's just because i go there you don't need to this is collagen it's a uh, oh gosh it's weird because it's a set in a, a reverse it's not mirror um so i sometimes i use that in with coffee um just adding it dissolves really well doesn't have a lot of flavor and also let me see another one so this one also I got it at um, Trader Joe's and this is Aria. This is soy protein mixed with uh, with other ones. So um, again, on the market there are so many different different types. Um, pick something that you like. There's also depends sweet uh, sweeten. Usually they don't have a lot of colors. Usually one scoop of protein. Uh, powder will have um, around 20 to 24 grams of protein and maybe between 90 to 120 calories. This usually they can use stevia, they can use different different flavorings. So uh, find whatever you, I use Quest as well. Um, and Quest has a mixture of whey protein and casein protein. So if you have allergies to milk, Stay away from from casein because this is the, the protein in in milk whey is uh, it's sort of a, also protein from milk but it's a pre-digest usually people will not have sensitivity to it you can e even find a, a whey protein peptides peptides means they're much smaller they're sort of chop it in a smaller pieces so it's much easier to to absorb so Again, I will I will send a list of my favorite protein powders that I use. But again, there's an endless list of of diff different protein. Okay. Can I before go you go on, Joanna? Can I just ask yeah. everyone to mute their their audio if they can, um, just for the background noises, so that some people don't have you pinned, and so it's changing. You're not staying in the screen the whole time. For everyone. Oh, okay. Okay. If you can, thank you. Now it's so quiet. <laughs> All right, let's continue. So another, so we have liquids, we have produce, we have protein, and now we uh, we have to to increase the satiety. Fiber, fiber is our good good friend, and there are so many different sorts of fibers. You get fiber from the produce for sure. So uh, you know, mango, spinach, they all have fiber, but we want more fiber because we want that sort of. Um, 
increase again increase fullness after drinking drinking that milk so there's a different different stuff my choice of fiber is believe it or not i love flax seeds those are so delicious um they are toasted i put on everything <laughs> it's like sesame seeds but they are flax seeds um there are some of them you can buy toasted some of them are not they are very high in fiber and they have good fats as well. Um, sometimes you have to grind them up if you really want to get the fat out of them. But if you want just the crunch and, and the fiber, you don't need to, you can eat them whole and they are perfectly fine. Another source of fiber and good fat is chia seeds. Uh, you probably have seen this. It's a sort of like you can make chia pudding, you can add to your oatmeal and other stuff. So. This is a definitely good addition to your smoothie. It's going to again make more or sort of a gel when, when you do it. I sometimes go over even farther, and I know some of you may have seen recommendations from your doctor. If you are on um, on medications that help, that cause you constipation, you may uh, you may sort of start introducing psyllium uh, husk it's very inexpensive source of fiber you have to be with adding all fibers you have to be sort of gentle with not overload your system because when you put too much you go and you're not drinking enough water it's going to be my, my, stuck in your gi tract so do uh sort of a teaspoon at a time, let it make sure that you drink enough water and a few days and you can do a little bit more, a little bit more. I usually love my uh, tablespoon. It, it doesn't have a taste. It just has a little crunch to it. So you can do that. You don't need to, it's, it's fine. But the chia seed and other stuff are fine. And also what you can do, and I often do is adding, um, fat to your fat some sort of fat to your uh smoothie and the fat could come from avocado so adding for the avocado it could come from nuts so you can put a you know few a few walnuts few pecans if you want or you can add uh, pumpkin seeds and this is again pumpkin seeds are very healthy consider one of those uh you know magical very healthy food they have good source or uh, they're a good source of zinc so they're great you can again using into your smoothies um on your salad as well but this is uh you can you can add that <coughs> this is a, a little funky stuff i don't know some of you might have used it's a uh, hemp seeds also three tablespoons so they will have uh they will have some um good basically good uh, uh, they have some protein, uh, but also they will have some um, fat, good fat that you can add to it and uh, that will help with the fullness. So a tablespoon of peanut butter, a tablespoon of almond butter, a tablespoon of um, uh, tahini if you want, a tablespoon of um, sunflower butter if you if you like it so again think about just components and you can come up with many different different uh blend and and solutions so we all know how to make a perfect smoothie that fills us up and keeps us full for hours to go i hope we we uh, we do so let's make it right so i don't know what you use for for uh for actually i'm going to keep it here because this is where i and i don't know how many of you makes uh, makes a smoothie i'm sure you have a fancy fancy um blender this is i had it for so long so many years and still use it it's ninja it's i like it because it's a portable cups right now there are so many different version of portable small one serving cup so I'm going to make it. I'm not going to make even full serving right now because I'm not going to drink that, but uh, almond milk. 
And guess what? If you have anything frozen or anything, make sure that you put your liquid first. It just blends much better. Um, so I'm going to add my fruits, my uh, mango. And I'm going to add a uh, so the scoops are pretty big. I'm going to add half because I'm making sort of, uh, you can put one or two. So often people can, pre you can prepare that. Sometimes people make it in advance. If you add your, your vegetables, they will oxidize. They will change the color a little bit. So you can prepare some of it and add more. And let me add my pumpkin seeds. Mm. I'm just not going to one tablespoon perfect. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pack the spinach. Okay, I'm gonna add more. I definitely want to add more spinach. It's not, it's not as green as I like. Uh, so often I will, sometimes when I'm so busy at work, I will make for, for lunch smoothie. And my lately, my favorite is chocolate. Hold on. All right, I'm not gonna make more noise, but you got the you got the point. And adding the flax seeds, it will make again a little bit creamier. You can blend it or you can just add it at the end and sort of mix it in and have that little crunch if you if you want, almost like a bubble tea. So this this is your smoothie for chocolate for chocolate lovers. What I do, uh, chocolate um, whey protein powder. I will add a tablespoon of, um, of peanut butter and I like the PB powder as well. So I added that and half a banana and blended with ice, that's it. So it's also, you know, very good. Again, not too many ingredients, but you could, you can, you, this is simple. This is the chocolate lover um, a mixture. Also, if I make blueberries, I will put, I love blueberries with, um, with uh, almond butter. Almond butter, blueberries, and vanilla, vanilla uh, uh, whey protein or yogurt if you, if you have. All right, so we're done with that. I'm gonna put it and hopefully it's gonna be kept well till tomorrow since I was here by myself eating all this stuff. I wish you could join me so we can, you, we can indulge in all the creation that we make. Perfect. We are attacking our num recipe number two. What time is it? We have a, I need to keep eye on it. Here it is. It's 6.58. All right. So we still have some time. We have a half an hour. We easy peasy. Okay. So let's make the flat bread. So let's say you want to um, you want to have a quick lunch or quick dinner, even for your kids, or you have a guest coming over and you would like to entertain. So you're going to make that beautiful um, flat bread. And what you're going to use is lavash bread. Do you see everybody see it? Okay, so one sheet of that bread, I'm gonna take it out. It's, you can see it's so thin. Um, and it's also great for wraps. So one, one, uh, one sheet has a 60, uh, half a sheet has 60 calories. So the whole one will have 
120. It has um, eight grams of carbohydrates, but two of them is uh, fiber and it has six grams of protein. So again, a good source of protein to add to our lunch or appetizers or dinner. So to do, so we're going to use that as a base for our, um, for our flatbread. So to do that, you can, if you put stuff on this, it's going to get very limpy. So to, to make it nice and crisp, I am going to basically, put olive oil and do a little brushing because we want to toast them. I also, the other day, I, I experimented with the low carb tortilla. I don't know if you use that. I love the low carb tortillas and they are great for uh, quick lunch for uh, make it sort of, make it a little, uh, quesadillas or oh, I always tell people that this is my my favorite but you can also use that as a as a tortilla toast it and make it as a base of your uh of your pizza okay paint it paint it paint it beautiful and now I'm going to toast it I think there's a question Kim could you read it she's saying Tr Trader Joe's has them uh no I went to Trader Joe's a couple of times. I've been looking for it and I couldn't find it. But um, Lavash, technically, you can find it in any store. So if you go to your deli sections and you see your different types of bread, like um, pita bread or other stuff, you will find this one. I know a lot of people say, I love the Trader Joe's Lavash bread. For some reason, I, either, I should probably ask what, I maybe they ask. have it. I know, I know. And just a reminder if we can everyone mute themselves so we don't have the background noise if possible. Thank you all. All right. So now we're going to test toast. So I have a I have an oven uh, set up for uh, 425. So toast them only for three to four four minutes. No more. The other day I burst two of them. I was so upset because, you know, my daughter said, can we have it for dinner? I'm like, sure. I put it on, didn't set the timer and brown, it was not edible. So toast it, okay? So you can even toast it ahead of time, right? So you sort of can make it. So I am going to keep an eye on it. We set it up timer because I am a chatty Cathy and I have tendency to burn stuff. Whenever I toast my pine nuts, I usually do two batches, which is expensive experiment to, to, to do it because I will burn them. All right, so timer, three minutes. Okay, so they, they will toast. Again, you can make uh, several of them, toast them and you'll be ready to go whenever, whenever you, know, you want to assemble. And what are we going to put on top of it? So there's a, endless possibilities so generally on pizza you put cheese and uh, well you can put pepperoni you can put other stuff but we are health conscientious so we are looking for a way to add a lot of vegetables to every dish that we can possibly make so uh today we're going to make that flat bread with the spring flavors and asparagus is one of those vegetables that um when it's one of the first vegetables that at least in New England uh, comes out out of the ground, um, then you, you can eat it. So it's a shoot, it's, it comes out literally like this, it grows and it grows to a huge, huge plant that it's fuzzy sort of, and then it blooms in at the end of this. So, but you eat that very first sort of uh, shoot in, in the spring. So generally, sometimes this the end of that could be very hard so it depends you know how they harvest when they if I pick from the garden it's tender and delicious if you get in the store sometimes that could be very like this one very very hard so if you want to clean your asparagus technically just snap 
snap it and it will break at the tender point. Don't throw those away. Those are still good for stock, for when you make soups. Uh, you can definitely add to it, save, save, put it in the freezer and you can use it. So asparagus could be eaten raw. They're delicious when, when they're fresh or, you, or just cook them as slightly. Unfortunately people, today- Sorry, Joanna, two people are asking, what is a good substitute for asparagus? They don't really care for it. Oh yeah, it's asparagus. It's a, it, it's a mild vegetables, but uh, it, some people don't like it. B broccoli. Or even the broccoli, uh, baby broccoli, you've seen it in the store a lot. You can definitely put baby broccoli. You can put, um, I even have a mushroom and spinach sort of prepare. So if you want other vegetables, you can put bell pepper, you can put cherry tomatoes or bell pepper and cherry tomatoes, but broccoli, especially the, the uh, I don't have it with you, but you can definitely use that. Okay, oh, see, I'm almost got scared, 13 seconds. All right, it's ready. Perfect. You can see, you can see, here, it's still pliable, but soon it's going to get, get toasty. So you don't need to worry about that. So going back to our toppings, th there are so many different, different, st uh, different stuff. If you, for those who like asparagus, add, throw some peas, it's great if you want it. If you don't like asparagus, go with the broccoli, that thinner one, even the regular one, just chop them uh, smaller. It's perfectly fine. So there, uh, it, will, it will taste good. Or you can come up with other mixture of different, uh, different vegetables for sure. So asparagus um, and just sort of cl clean them. The white asparagus, it's not as common in the US. They're more sort of appreciated in Europe. Uh, I'm not a big fan of white asparagus and the way how white asparagus are grown or uh, they are basically a uh, regular type or white, a yellow, uh, green, and they are covered with soil. So they never see, they never develop chlorophyll. They never develop the green color and because they are buried, always buried. And how they harvest, they go and uh, uh, remove the soil and they harvest the uh, white asparagus. They usually very, mm, they're harder. They're, they're chewy. You have to go and clean the ends and it's, um, I'm, I'm not a big, big fan. Um, but you know, they're, they're, they're fine. So, so normally again, save your tips and what you can do for this one, just cut them in smaller pieces. Uh, and you can saute them, uh, pre-cook them just slightly. So unfortunately my stove, um, they were, the, the space was painted and the stove is not working the top, only the bottom. So I had to cook in my regular kitchen. So I have already here uh, saute asparagus and you actually wanted to make all your topics sort of ahead of time because the cooler, the easier to handle, right? So you have your, we have our vegetables. I'm going to clean that. But also what you can do, it's still a delicious saute. And I give you three recipes, three ideas for different, different types. You can use a uh, spinach. So, so if you like mushrooms, you can saute your uh, mushrooms. I uh, put some garlic into it if you like, and then throw a, a half a bag of spinach or whole bag of spinach sauteed and you have a sort of mushroom spinach top. Very easy, very easy. Um, also what I really like, uh, you can add extra, um, I have here caramelized onion. So just saute some onions and I like at Trader Joe's, I don't know how many Trader Joe's goers are there. I like their rosemary ham. It's nice on sandwiches and it's also nice on that flatbread. My, at least my daughter likes it. So you can combine sort of this and even with asparagus and 
have a you know a different addition it's 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 perfectly fine if you do eat ham so again endless possibilities but let's talk about also the base what you can do with the base so you can go vegan or you can go sort of dairy base so for dairy base today i'm going to uh do a, a sort of use a cottage cheese and this is again interesting um interesting base because you can you can use a ricotta for your sort of uh, white pizza right um uh, but you can also use cottage cheese putting a cottage cheese and in, in a blender in a food processor it will puree to fluff it absolutely is delicious so and it's sort of tasteless doesn't have a lot of flavor because this is just a plain low-fat cottage cheese so you can add flavor to it i even use so for the base if you can use you can add lemon zest and you can add uh, basil and maybe a little parsley for your for your base so i am going to quickly 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 I'm gonna make more noise for you. Why not? How many of you like cottage cheese? Cottage cheese is sort of love of hate. Either it's like with sardines, either you love them or you hate them. How many people use actually cottage cheese on a regular basis? Hello. Yes, no. Uh, I sort of I grew up, I told you I'm from Poland, and I grew up with a farmer cheese which is a different um different types of cheese it's a thicker and there's not a lot of that clumpy stuff so i was never a big fan of cottage cheese i can eat it but i'm like eh, not not my cup of tea but since i start pureeing it i love it and also you can make a fabulous dessert just if you put a um, container of cottage cheese in a food processor, puree it, and I made with a uh, peanut butter uh, powder or a little bit of peanut butter and cocoa cocoa powder and a little, a little sweetener. Oh my God, it was so good. It was like a, you know, a chocolate cloud with, you know, peanut butter flavor. So, uh, but, okay, so, it doesn't take long, seriously, it's literally, I'm going to. All right, and now it's literally fluffy. Let me just, so you can use some of it for your base of your uh, flatbread and some of it you leave it for dessert add something to it if you want and it will be delicious all right so we have we have our our uh our cottage cheese blend and we're going to add um we're going to add some uh some flavors flavors to it okay i already pre I had something because I told you I made the other day. So this is the cottage cheese that I have. So it's a little thicker and adding, I add a little bit of mozzarella cheese to it. Again, blend it in. So if you want to cut down on your topping of your cheese, let's say you make, this is actually quattro formaggio, whatever trader just had it, right? Or whatever I had in the refrigerator but low uh, parts came mozzarella is great or this one is is great so if you mix your cheese either with the cottage cheese puree it adds more protein and decrease it still be very creamy and decrease sort of the high calorie uh, caloric volume for the food so think about cutting basically your regular cheese with either cottage cheese, but also you can add, uh, you can add like a two tablespoon or so to, uh, of your Greek yogurt to it. Great idea, sort of, it's a, I, I, um, I was just sort of uh, recently joined a cooking class and the chef, uh, Eva was talking about it. I'm like, this is brilliant. So I started using that and it's 
and I'm passing to you all the wisdom that I acquired. Um, so again, cottage cheese, blend with cheese, or you can also use a little bit of, um, use a little bit of Greek yogurt to add more protein and, and decrease the uh, calories for, for your cheese. All right, so we have that. We're going to start assembling, don't you worry. So you can use that and add your, add your vegetables to it, which we're going to do. Um, so let's start with, where is, here it is. So I have, I'm going to make two of them. Two different ones, why not? Why not, right? We deserve it, variety, variety, spice of life. So we're going to spread our, on one of them, our cottage cheese, other cheese. Uh, and don't overdo it. Don't make it two inches, two inches thick because remember it's a flatbread. It's a something that you would use for, for a little munch munch and you don't want that to be soggy that's the that's the trick to it don't overdo it all right perfect so just i just spread thinly the cheese right and i'm going on the other one you can spread just the tomato sauce as simple as it is, jar of tomatoes, or I got a Trader Joe's red pepper with eggplant, eggplant. So I'm going to go with that for our vegan option, because who knows, maybe some of you do not like dairy and still want to enjoy a little crunch, crunch and little vegetables, right? Remember, uh, vegetables are our friends and often, Often, you know, we have to find the ways to sneak them in into every meal that we have. All right. And this is, smells delicious. And again, tomato sauce will work it perfectly fine. So we have this and I have my, my asparagus. So I'm just going to use my hands since nobody will try my food but me. Uh, All right, all right, and all right. So on this one, since I made that mushroom, uh, mushroom spinach, I'm going to put a little bit of that. Actually, you know, for, and I don't know if you are aware, but mushrooms are a good source of vitamin D. And I tell you why. It's not that, that they are sitting in the sun and soaking the vitamin D. Actually, the way how they grow, especially the cultivated mushrooms, they are uh, radiated with, um, with a lamp that sort of produce, that helps them to produce vitamin D. Perfect. You could also, if you like, uh, if you like, if you have a, a pesto, put a little pesto on it. It would be delicious as well. All right. Now, and on my cheese pizza, because I want a little bit more protein, I'm going to add a tiny bit more of just a cheese. And this is mixture already with other types of cheeses, but if you had, uh, often you can use whatever you have in the refrigerator that it's a little on the drier side, right? Perfect, okay. So let's just see, and we're going to bake that. I want to share that with you. Uh, I mean, you can see how beautiful in colors they are and again if you you can put a you can put a um cheese on the other one as well for sure all 
All right, eight minutes and then we'll check. We have to set it up, otherwise we'll burn stuff. Okay, done. So again, in the in the uh, in your handouts, which which you should have received, you have the spring lavash uh, flatbread, and this is with a with um, with the asparagus uh, and the cottage cheese and herbs, and we're going to finish finish that so make it even prettier. And you know, like in a restaurant, we're going to add a a little arugula. Who does not like arugula? Some people don't. I know it's a little bit stronger flavor, but we're going to, hold on. I'm going to mix a little arugula just to finish, finish it, sort of like put a salad on top of it, right? So tiny bit of oil and A little bit of lemon zest. So you, your salad generally, how you make your salad, right? You have the greens and uh, some lemon and, and olive oil are perfectly fine. And you can definitely, so this gives, uh, so the cheese is going to melt and be sort of gooey chewy, right? And this gives, breaks is, gives a little tartness so it's a really nice combination and for this one adding parsley because parsley is really high in vitamin c so um we're going to again sneak in more herbs herbs are the best best way to take your food to a different level if you have a salad and you want your salad to be a gourmet throw some basil leaves. I mean, seriously, you buy this for three bucks at any store and just pick a few basil leaves or parsley if you want um, and add a few nibbles to your salad. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. The other day, my daughter's friend came and I made salad and was literally like, okay, I have different, wasn't any particular salad, but I add uh, basil and I add um, parsley and her friend was like, you make the best salad ever. I'm like, I know, I know it's the herbs, right? Joanna, it's, uh, it's, yeah. Someone is asking if they didn't get the handouts, where are they gonna be able to find them after the class? I will upload them into Facebook into under a files. Under the, in the form health, the form health group? Yes. Yes, Perfect. or if you, um, the, the problem is I could not send it via chat message because this, there's no uh, that fun functionality, but I will upload in a Facebook, there's even some handouts from my previous cooking class. So if you are uh, interested to see stews and other stuff, they will be there. So just look for it, okay? If not, just send a, a, a text to your dietitian, to me or whoever, and say, hey, I need the handouts. Right? That's, that would be a very, uh, very easy to do. Man, I need a mess. I need, a, I, need, I need that magic, you know, when they do cooking, uh, cooking show, everything is like, okay, it's down here, down there, and everything is clean. I, I think I need to learn that uh, better. It's, uh, it's funny, when I cook, it's a mess in the kitchen. Oh my gosh, you should see when my husband cooks, everything is so neat and organized and you know prepared, chopped, which is a very good skill to have. Uh, I'm gonna leave that for my next lifetime. I have a whole long list what's gonna happen in my next lifetime because this lifetime might not happen. At the age of 50 something, I'm pretty much sacked. I still work on many improvements, but you know, you only can do so much. All right, let's look at our beautiful, oh my God, guys. I wish you were here. It would be so great to share a meal. I, 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 
I used to do cooking classes in um in a community center uh in Boston in Brookline and I would have like six women would come and they were older they are like 70 80s um and I would cook for them every week and I would come with like crazy recipes crazy ingredients because you know it was so much fun to ex to, to make something they are not used to it they were typically eating a very traditional american american diet but we would try all kinds of stuff and star fruits and different fruits and different exotic exotic things so uh it was it was a lot of fun all right oh my gosh I think my other stuff I need to rescue because it's getting a little toasty without the blankie of the, oh my, okay, okay, guys. Check it out. All right, I should probably, oh, one is stuck. But we're going to unstuck them, don't worry. Okay. I don't want to burn myself. I was being generous on the edges for the piece. Okay. okay, it's coming, it's coming. Look at this, guys. So this is all green, but you can definitely put tomatoes um, and other stuff. And it's such a great, like seriously for entertainment. I don't know if you do entertain these days, not a lot of people do it, but uh, we are ahead of, ahead of the game. So again, this is, you can, why not dress it up more? Add more, some greens, right? It always looks pretty. I told you that, you know, spring is green. I love that, I call that juicy green. You know, when trees are start uh, having leaves, I call that juicy green. So we need to get as much juice as possible in, uh, into our food. Yeah. Any questions so far? All right, guys, wish you were here. So otherwise I have to eat it all. All right, done. What do you think? I need to put it somewhere. And what we can do, let's see, it's going to chill, cool off a little bit. I'm in my mother-in-law apartment, so I need to find a... I, I, I where's her cutting board somewhere not here all right so i'm just going to transfer our delicious delicious and cut it and enjoy it later all right everybody seen it i hope you will make that actually i challenge you to make it because um, that's a easy, easy peasy to do it. And again, you can use even the, uh, you, you can use the low carb tortilla and it works really well. Even low carb tortilla, even it's a little bit more crispier, I think than that. Although my daughter Courtney all said, no, ma'am, I like my, I like lavash better than, than low carb tortilla. Okay. Now we are moving to our last, last, last um, recipe. And we're going to make our protein truffles. So again, it's a, you, you, you've heard it from every, all your, all, all your uh, team dietitians are focusing on adding more protein. It really helps. It fills you up and prevents from muscle loss. So, so we always sort of work towards that. And 
using whey protein, again, it's a, sometimes people might feel like it's a shortcut, but it works. So here, what I'm going to do is use, uh, again, some kind of protein powder, and you can use whatever you want. And you could be a vanilla or it could be a chocolate flavor. So we're going to just mix this with, where's my almond? almond? Oh, 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 here it is, man, I'm losing it. Um, almond butter, peanut butter, or whatever nut butter you have. So those two ingredients, not much to it. Actually, I when I made that in the past, I didn't use sweetener. So this is honey. You can use a little bit of honey. You can use a little bit of maple syrup um, to sort of, you know, add a little bit more flavor. You don't need to. Uh, it's, a, it's a sugar, you know, just like any other, other sugar. But again, a small amount is perfectly fine. So we're going to make that those three ingredients with a pinch of salt, just to enhance the flavor, blend it together. So it depends on how, depends on your powder. Some powders are very dry, some of them are not as dry. So you can always, if it's really dry, you can add a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of, water, of milk or water and blend it in. So it's going to make a paste. So let's do that. I'm going to, and I'm going to make a, Half a recipe versus because I already made some. I made with the chocolate, chocolate uh, whey protein, but basically, you would use two thirds of a of a, a whey protein uh, or protein powder. Not necessary whey. There are many other type, um, and you use uh, where is my quarter cup. I'm making half. I'm using almond butter. And this is a pretty fresh, I just bought it. And some, you can also add to it uh, a little bit of oatmeal if you want. So you can blend other, other things. I've seen uh, recipes that add oatmeal. To, uh, with it. So you can see it doesn't sort of blend that much. I'm most likely going to use a little bit, that's it, not much of that. And I'm going to use, so it's a, almost blends together. And let's not forget about the pinch of salt. Um, I don't know how you feel about adding salt to your desserts. Um, often, if you just add a little bit, it enhances the flavor. So it's not, it's not gonna add a lot of sodium. But if you very uh, salt, uh, sodium sensitive, you can definitely avoid that. Again, this is two seconds. I'm going to add a little bit. Actually, it smells really good. Well, almond, right? Almond uh, butter. It's, it's, um, it smells really good. I love it. I told you uh, in my smoothie. So you can see it's basically getting more into paste. And the fun part is, I'm gonna add a little bit more. So you can make that in advance and you can put it in an airtight container and keep it in the refrigerator. So if you want something, you know, after dinner, um, that could be a nice sort of a little, little something to, to, to have it and still feels, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly healthy. It's uh, almond butter and the protein powder. Okay, so I think they are well blend, let's see. So the idea is, so you grab it and you roll it in a balls. So one, one tablespoon, this is a much smaller, 
smaller bowl and you can roll it in many different uh, different coatings. You can have the chia seeds. I made here uh, flax seeds, uh, cocoa, uh, cocoa powder. Uh, I made even, and it didn't turn out good, uh, a matcha. Do you know what matcha is? Anybody uses matcha? I like matcha lattes. Okay. But so matcha is basically a variety of green tea full of uh, 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 antioxidant, very powerful sort of um, uh, antioxidant or phytochemicals source. Catocholanine uh, is in it. I think that's how you pronounce it. But so that's why it became very popular sort of in a health space. Um, matcha, be careful because it does have a lot of caffeine. So it's a very pick me up. Uh, there, there, it's a, it's a, it has caffeine in it. So just, but again, if you like it, there was so many different variation, like uh, you can do latte, you can do different stuff, but I bought it once and I'm, taste wise, I'm not a big fan of it, but so I still had it and I sort of used that for rolling, but you can, um, you can roll in coconut, you can put um, oatmeal, you can also put oatmeal inside of it if you want a little bit more body to it. Um, so let me just so see the rolling with with that. It's a little liquid almost too for, with, with the oatmeal, it doesn't roll well. But let me do the chia and see. But you can do again many different variation and in the handouts it says okay you can do rose uh, rose seeds finely chopped sesame chia uh, pepitas hemp hard sunflower you can do matcha powder you can do quick uh uh cooking oh that's why because this is old-fashioned oats they are a little bit too robust for that um, so, so again, you can chop your nuts, you can, the, ha the hazelnuts or whatever you like, um, coconut and roll in that. And again, store it in a airtight container and have that. Let me see. I might need a little bit more liquid to it. Again, this is all depends. Yeah, I think I will need more liquid because it doesn't, it's a little bit of dry. How are we doing on time? It is 7.37. Oh my goodness, we are right on time. Oh, it did dry out. Okay, so we are almost done or we are done because I made the other before right here. And, um, but they were chocolate flavor. So I will indulge and I will tell you tomorrow how they how they taste, uh, but again, it's not much to it. If you, you make like a Play-Doh, right? You just make a little rolls and you can roll in whatever, whatever roll, roll you want, right? And put it in a, in, a, in a refrigerator and have it. Let me see actually. <laughs> how do we make a nose, but Guys, this is so good. This is a chocolate one. Okay, I'm not making more. It's it's a very, very tasty. So this probably ends our class with a huge mess for me and hopefully with some entertainment and no 